portrait. Yeah. <laughs> you do that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's probably good. Yeah. This is, this is the, with, uh, uh, this has been like in the background of everything. Hello everyone and welcome to Paula Soapbox Live. What you're seeing in the background is Keaton trying to do a little redecorating. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm pleased to welcome him back to the show. He is about to do his fifth annual Eve of the Eve show on stageit.com. So uh, please welcome the very talented singer, songwriter, actor, musician, <laughs> <laughs> complete renaissance guy. Keaton Simons. Hi. I love your Hi. accent so much. I always forget just how awesome it is. Just, just how thick my accent is. Yeah, right? you, say, you say my name really well, Keaton Simons. Keaton Simons. Which is so <laughs> great. So fun that bad. <laughs> it, it accentuates the difference between Simons and Simmons. It's yeah. Simons. Well, I'm sure a lot of people probably mispronounce your last name or oh, misspell God. it it's non-stop it, my whole life is that keaton simmons yeah. is my mm -hmm. arch nemesis he steals all my gigs he puts <laughs> all my best my uh, best intros yeah amazing yeah um well since the last time you were on the show you have done quite a bit more acting um I, yeah I, what have i done since last <laughs> since last time in the acting world well, you did. A, I know you did a web series. Oh yes, yes, yes. You did a web series, and you did um, mm -hmm. Days of Power. You were involved oh, in yeah, that. Okay, I did that. Yeah, since last time I saw you, I thought that yeah. was yeah. Uh, that was a couple of years ago. Since the last time you were, we did an really? interview. Oh no, yeah. I didn't realize. Oh, yeah, my, yeah. I think the last time we did an interview was in 2015. So it's it's been wow. a minute. Wow. <laughs> 2017 now. I've always made jokes about 2017. There's like nobody ever envisioned the year 2017. It's such a, like a I know. So, number, you know. <laughs> so yeah, Days of Power, I believe it's coming out in 2018. Oh yeah. Well, Days of Power, yes, yes, yes. For the full release and stuff like that. It's gotten some great attention at festivals and uh, in local releases and stuff like that. that. That was that was a super fun project to be a part of. I loved it. I got to get involved with the music side of it too, because um, a lot of musicians involved in that in that whole project. Yeah. So you get yeah. to do the acting and the music. I guess it's always good when you can incorporate both of those things. For sure. It's very fun. It's fun for me whenever I get to do music because that's my main thing that I love. And I love acting when I have a chance to do something interesting, you know. Um, and this was super cool. I like especially real stuff. This was like, you know, most of, of what I did. There was a lot of improv in there. But, I mean, not that I was like, I improv. My, I, I was plenty directed and, and beautifully, beautifully handled. And the script is amazing and so on and so forth. But uh, it, it was fun. It was a fun, like, real kind of hands-on thing. Yeah. So so what's it about? Uh, it's, a, it's a thriller. It's like a horror thriller. And it's um, you got to see it because there's a lot of there's a you know it's major spoiler alert territory in there, but uh, but so you kind of got to see it. But it's a thriller. Don't don't see it if you don't want to be scared a little bit. Oh, all right. <laughs> and it comes out when in February or yeah, awesome. You tell me. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to look that up again to make sure. sure. Yeah, no, me too. It's hard to keep track uh, sometimes of, of that stuff, not just because I've been doing so much stuff. I made a new record. I was in Nashville making a new Yeah, record. I heard that you were in Nashville. That seems like that's something you should probably keep me informed about. Well, yeah, sorry about that. I will. I, I definitely <laughs> will. Uh, will let you know in the future times. But that was. I was so focused. I didn't do anything social media. Uh, what the whole time I was there, I really wanted to kind of just connect to being true in the moment, and and really just being a part of the Nashville vibe. I wasn't trying to like flash anything or exploit anything in that town. That's a an amazing, amazing. Uh, Mecca of music and so rich in in history and present and future and I <clears throat> Really honored to be able to be there as a as a visitor and and I was treated with the most amazing southern hospitality and, yeah. and Couldn't be happier with this uh, with this EP 
So did you play at any venues while you were there or were you just- I got to play at the Bluebird. You did play at the Bluebird. Was that your first time? That was my first time even oh, ever wow. being there. And uh, cause it was all because of Marshall Altman who produced the record. Um, yeah. He, he he brought me down to the Bluebird. He had a thing going and brought me up, and I got to play some, and it was really, really cool. That whole experience of working with him was so great. In fact, I got a text from him just now, uh, just earlier today, saying that uh, that he's just approving final masters of this record, and then we're already moving on to working on artwork and everything, and so we should be set for to release this record next year, uh, right in time for the Sail Across the Sun uh, cruise. Yeah, oh that's, great, so that's I'm gonna make that an exclusive thing if I can, if I can do that, I really wanna do that. I wanna have it be available to the Sail Across the Sun people first, because I'm so yeah. incredibly grateful and flabbergasted that I won that awesome yeah. Surprise and that opportunity to do that. I get to do a live at 35 on Southwest. Yeah. Well, I knew that you did the, the sell across the sun thing was the result of a, a vote. Yeah, right? I know. I'm like, That's I can't so cool. believe it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I've had some incredible opportunities throughout my life, of course, but I don't tend to like win a lot of stuff, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, and That's so work I, for it. <laughs> Well, right. No, no. I mean, I've, I've been, I've had, it's been, I've been gifted many wonderful, amazing things right. and so on and so forth, but I haven't won a lot of stuff and I've been, I've competed for stuff that I have not won many, many times. Yeah. Um, so I, I was like, whoa, I won something. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I voted, so <laughs> I helped well, you a little you. bit. What little bit my vote did. <laughs> that's it. You know, I think I heard I won by one vote. So that's, it was probably. Oh yeah. Well, vote. that had to be the vote that I put <laughs> in. So. <laughs> I, I don't know how much, but I don't know what, <laughs> but I'm just glad I'm super stoked because I was getting all concerned that because I had several friends who were also in the, in the running for that, which, which creates a serious dilemma for me because I don't, uh, I just, that approach, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I like to see things as abundant and in that sense, there's nobody that gets, that loses, you know what I mean? Of course. Right, yeah. There's only so much opportunity for one thing or another, but competition kind of forces this uh, winner based on everyone else losing type of, of dynamic that's wow. super uncomfortable for me because I'm, I, I feel very empathetic uh, for everyone involved. We're all in something together. If nothing else, we're connected by being together in the running for something or other. And the devastation of everyone else losing something, you know what I mean? It's, it's tough. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting <laughs> thing. I prefer to avoid it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so the sell across the sun thing that is in June. March? Uh, it is in March. March. March yeah. yeah. That thing is in March. Yeah. So, so you're thinking that the album release will be kind of around that same time? Yeah, yeah. I would ideally I would have the um I'm just I'm saying this out loud I, as if I have nothing to do with this although I I I don't I have an awesome team uh for for this record and I'm really really stoked because it's enabled me to to just focus more on the artist side of it and be very creative in making this record like I said I didn't do any social media we had some video documentation but I wasn't like posting on Instagram and stuff like that yeah. not to, you know I don't want to sound like I'm being judgmental about it it just for me to be really connected in that moment I needed to remember that what what I do is create music and not create, you know, photographs of myself. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have a title for the album yet? Yes. It's called one, two, three, go. This is the okay, first yeah. time I've had a, a death for certain title, like knowing for sure. I mean, what uh, X's and Y's is such a smart uh, title, but that album kind of never actually came out, you know? Uh, yeah. So who the hell even knows where that went? But, uh, <laughs> I, and and all my album titles I've felt have been clever. Like otherwise, I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to sign off on it. But one two three go is so it's just I love it for some reason. Yeah, I think that's a great title, and I can't wait to hear it. Obviously, I know we talked a little bit about you releasing new music last year, 
when when I ran into you in in New York. So yes, I'm looking well, yeah, to and then, that was so awesome. We went to Roxy's restaurant. We went to yeah, King. that was so With much fam. fun. That was so super cool. I've been there many times. She yeah. is kicking ass. She's yeah. like, she's on she's constantly on TV on like the Good Morning America Today Show and stuff like that like That's awesome. prepping stuff with Arun Sanchez and all these like Matt Lauer and so it's just like crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, maybe not Matt Lauer anymore. But... Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I guess well, I, I don't follow a lot of that stuff. Is he? Yeah. He, he, <laughs> I'm that great. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Wonderful. <Anyway. laughs> I know. I digress. Um. Well, I mean, yeah, we can go all day talking about that craziness so yeah cool. that's just perfect <laughs> well let's see roxanne on social media quite I've, a bit and I, I see some of the things that's going on with her restaurant and oh yes and it's, it's so, really cool she's kicking bootay but, yeah no for me i've seen i've seen it because i i grew up uh my whole family's in the film and television industry and my mom is a, a very beautiful woman and and you know a lot of you know got a, was powerful in the industry and and climbing ranks and that kind of stuff and saw so much stuff in me as a child like um it was really disturbing to me you know and so it's this is this is not new information to me i'm happy that it's being exposed and let's we yeah. can leave it at that if you want yeah <laughs> Moving on. Mm -hmm. um, so you've had a, a few more uh, placements of your songs since the last time we talked. Uh, when I go, that song just kind of took off. It was on Suits, which we talked about that the last yeah. time you played it, the last yeah. time you were on. And then it was in the trailer for Miss Sloan. Yes, that's right. And they got quite a lot of views. Yeah, that was awesome. I love <laughs> that. I want to know where all of these people are. I, like, come to me. Yeah, <laughs> I, I want to like I want to connect with every single one of them. I would hug every one of those people. Right. There are five million people out there who have viewed my stuff, or even, even you know, just one million, and each one of them viewed it five times. Yeah. Well, well, I think the song, you know, it's it's kind of taken on a life of its own. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That that that's, yeah, it is it is pretty cool. I lo I love that. Um, I interviewed uh, Todd Carey on the show last year, yeah. and uh, we talked about the fact that, for me, I've discovered a lot of new music from things like that, from movies, from television, yeah. and that's what it's actually how I discovered you. Um, Hollywood Heights, your oh, song the Other Side was on Hollywood Heights. Side of Hollywood Heights. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. So do you find that that's a really – good marketing tool for your music for sure it's wonderful I, I for me it's such a great outlet for for music um obviously music and picture suit each other so well we invented music videos to be go along with the music even you know right you know, yeah like uh it's their peanut butter and jelly it's it's a delicious combination and it definitely helps of course with with marketing um marketing such an interesting slippery eel because it's constantly changing in today's world it's so directly tied in with technology that as technology advances so does that you know and and, and it's and it changes so rapidly that all of our approaches to things need to kind of be rapidly changing that's why i like to focus on the on the art and the creative yeah. part of it because that part is very very solid you know? Well, if you don't have that, then it doesn't matter how you market it. It's not right. going to go anywhere. So. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, but <laughs> it kind of does matter how you are because you can market <laughs> something very uh, – right now, there's a great ability for people to market things to success uh, no matter what that thing is. It's arguable that somebody with the with clever enough marketing could make anything or any one successful. That's – Yeah. That that's not necessarily always been true. I don't know. Maybe it has. Uh, maybe it will. Maybe it won't. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, you've had. We talked about your songs, yeah. and the marketing, and we talked about your album. That kind of yeah. got ahead of my. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <It's okay>. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. No, seriously. Um, 
Well, speaking of your songwriting, though, mm -hmm. I came across this quote that you said in an interview, and it was, true inspiration is in the things that you don't notice all the time. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Well, there's, there's, that's, I mean that in a, I think if I recall correctly, I mean that in a specific way. And I was just talking about it yesterday too. Um, it's like, I, I, I realize this may, this, uh, everyone might think I'm an idiot for, for taking a lifetime to, to, to come to this observation, but, <laughs> um, but it's more what it represents. I realized, you know, a few years ago or whatever, sometime within the last 10 years of my life, that the night is so much more illuminated in the, in the full moon, the fullest of the moon. And I'm like, yeah. oh my God, uh, you know, this is an obvious truth that I've just taken for granted. You know what I mean? It's not that yeah. I didn't know that it was true. It's just that I didn't, I just never put it together like sometimes, you know, like LMNOP, you know what I mean? Some people think of that as one one letter. One, but one letter. <laughs> it's stuck in your mind in a certain way. And so that feeling of awakening to something that's always been right in front of you yeah. is, is very similar to that feeling of, of being inspired uh, with a melody or a lyric or an idea when writing songs. That Those yeah. feelings are really similar to me. Yeah. Oh, suddenly this sense. thing appears before you, you're just like, whoa, it's just a gift, you know? Yeah. It's super yeah. Cool. Well, that makes sense. No, it doesn't make yeah. you sound like an idiot at all. <laughs> well, no, no, about being an idiot to not notice that. Not notice it. When the moon is full. Listen, I once poured, uh, uh, well, that's a story for another time. <laughs> no, no, no. What, no, what was it? What was it you were going to say? Oh, <laughs> it's. You know, just little brain mistakes. I was trying to filter the pulp out of a, out of some carrot juice. I love carrot juice, and I, but I didn't want the pulp in there. So I held a strainer over the sink and I poured the carrot juice into the strainer. And moments <laughs> into it, I go, something's wrong here. <laughs> I'm I'm preserving the wrong part of this. Right. <laughs> Um, I needed to have something a receptacle underneath to catch the stuff that I wanted. Right, yeah. Straight into the sink. Well, it sounds like something that I would do, so don't feel too bad. I, we all have those moments. I may have <laughs> yeah. them. Yeah, it's like, yeah, your brain just doesn't connect something. Um, well, over the course of your career, you have covered other artists, yeah. their songs. And I noticed when I was trying to gather questions for this interview that there's quite a few covers of some of your songs out there now. Oh, um, yeah, there are quite a few, huh? More than I have noticed before. Okay. So have you ever watched these? I have watched many of them, but I guess I haven't seen all of them. But anytime I have, anytime one, I see one that pops up or come across one, I always watch it. That is like, to me, that's the biggest honor ever. Yeah. I've gotten, I've, I've gotten connected with, with some people and, uh, you know, like for me, that's the most encouraging thing in the world <laughs> to, to me, you know, cause yeah. that goes, it's, it's such a full circle type of thing. You know, I, I, I am so inspired by the works of others that it ma makes me want to sing that song. And so to, to be able to create works that make other people feel that way is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So do you ever like watch these and think, hmm, I never thought of doing the song that way, but it's a good idea. Oh, well, I definitely, I always appreciate the, the approach no matter what. It's always a unique approach. It's yeah. never, there's some, there's some, um, uh, there's one, like, I think it was a currently or something that was like an electronic version that someone did and like this, like it's, it was like eight bit, garage electronic version of it and it was so <laughs> awesome and I just loved it you know I, I I encourage that for sure I want more people to do that if uh, I really I wish uh, I knew somebody who <laughs> was enthusiastic about transcribing my my stuff because although I'm capable of doing it I really suck at it and it's been a <laughs> long time since I've done it um but I I'd love that I mean I can chart it out simply but to do like a tablature book or something like that for some of my tunes that'd be really fun and people ask me for them sometimes and I've I've given I've made a lot of charts and and uh you know chord sheets for my for my tunes for people yeah 
Um, well, I noticed that one of the one of the songs that was covered quite frequently was "Without Your Skin," yeah, and nice. I know you you have a funny story about that from when you performed it at oh, yeah. a, a White Sox game. We've not talked about that, so I think that you should tell that. Oh yes, absolutely. I love <laughs> I love this moment. Um, so I was performing, uh, singing the national anthem at the White Sox, and they have a very cool thing in Chicago, and they have a really cool thing that they that they do there where you get to play a, a little set before you do the anthem it's like two separate things and they film it and it's awesome so you get the full crowd and we did a couple of songs of mine and without your skin was my single at that time and so i started singing without your skin and it gets a little sexy for baseball you know for family yeah. and so and i I mean, there were got to, had to have been twenty thousand people in those stands. It was a big game, and uh, and I'm singing without your skin, and I get to the part where I says, "Ooh, without your skin, I'm naked," and I heard well, just one little boy, like probably nine years old, who just goes, "Ew," <laughs> and that will stick with me forever because I agree with him completely. That's that, <laughs> you know. I, that one, I didn't do that one at, at picnics anymore, except yeah, unless I told the story. Unless you told the story, yeah. I'd have to tell the story if I wanted to do that at like a fair. If you ever want an honest opinion about anything, ask a seven-year-old boy. There you go. <laughs> ask, ask a child. Ask a child. They will tell you the truth every time. Yes, or they will lie to you in such a way that you know that they're lying to you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that happens too. So tell me about this uh, Rooted in Peace film that you were involved oh, in. Oh, Rooted in Peace is super cool. Greg Reitman, awesome, amazing dude, uh, filmmaker, has made some really cool movies. Fuel is another movie of his. Um, but Rooted in Peace is just, it's awesome because it touches on everything that needs to be touched on and shows, you know, the, the through lines between environmentalism, peace, uh, um, you know, and, and, and consciousness really, you know, it just talks, asks the question of kind of why don't we have peace in the world? It seems like it would be much better. You know what I mean? It seems like it's win, win, win. Yeah. Um, seems like it would be easier. Right. But why don't we have it? Where is, where is this? And all started from him planting tree or led to him planting trees and finding transcendental meditation. And there's some amazing people that, that, uh, that lend themselves to this, this film and I'm honored to have been in it and have a song in it that I, that was written with my grandma, Lila, which is amazing. That is awesome. So great. And she, she absolutely loves that. She's, she's thrilled. My grandmother has written and created some amazing works through her life, mostly in the world of film and television um, and theater. Uh, but I think she's, prouder of this song than of any of those things is which is amazing i love it yeah well and it's great that you you got to co-write a song with your grandma that's something yes, that you'll always indeed. have yes indeed absolutely yeah well let's talk about chris cornell for a second yeah um, sure I'm not sure if we talked about him the last time that we did the interview yeah, um, right around the time that we were doing stuff so i probably would have would have yeah Unless it was like before, right before. Yeah, I'm not sure about the timing of that, but it all happened very quickly. Uh, yeah, from from us getting connected to to uh, to his passing and everything. Um, but yeah, no, we we got we got hooked up, and he heard my music. Uh, and through, and through Eric, yeah, 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 through my stepdad, Eric was in his video and gave him some of my tunes. And Chris actually really dug him. He listened to him and he dug him. And he hit me up on Twitter and wrote that he like really liked my guitar playing and really liked my songs and my voice and all that stuff. And I'm like, oh my god, Chris Cornell is like likes my stuff. And and I said. Look, dude, you tell me like you like my guitar player. You, I'll shake a tambourine in your band. I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll, just, I'll dance. I'll be a backup dancer. Um, and I don't dance. Uh, <laughs> that's how far I go. But um, and then and then before I knew it, I got a got an email from his manager, who I love, uh, that said Chris would be wants you to join him and play guitar with him for his upcoming promotion for his new single and his new record and i was like 
wow. And so, and the band was amazing. Uh, it's unbelievable. And we did the full talk show circuit, uh, morning and evening and and did a very very special live acoustic performance at Sirius XM uh with with uh myself Chris and an amazing amazing artist named Brian Gibson who was playing cello there but he's a multi-instrumentalist and he was actually uh the other half of of Chris's live touring performance uh, band because he had done he had done a full solo acoustic tour himself but the the most recent one that he did for his solo stuff was just him and Brian and they went all over the world and uh, you know so this guy's an amazing musician it was the three of us and we played five tunes in total one of them uh, we covered uh, nothing compares to you and that that got a lot of uh, it, did, it got a lot of views. It went viral. Everyone was talking. About, everyone's still talking about that one. Yeah, that was just such a special, incredible thing. And like, uh, man, I mean, I still think about that all the time. I, I sometimes I feel like it's it's only now sinking in in some certain ways that it, it hasn't yet. You know that he's yeah. gone just because we really there's so much stuff i mean when i was watching other performances and watching so many moments between the the two of us that i remember and it's just a bizarre thing to to yeah. watch that guy so what did you learn from working with him um i learned a lot about artistic integrity and about or about uh, you know kind of quiet confidence about um Honestly, I learned a lot about happiness and acceptance from him because I really saw him as somebody who who appreciated the life that that he had and and just was kind of focused on his on his art and he only made the music that he wanted to make and it was that was an amazing inspiration to me because that's where I started as well and then I learned about the compromises necessary to 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 be successful within the music industry and I embraced a lot of those compromises because I, I a lot of them make sense to me uh, but artistic and integral compromise that doesn't make sense to me and for, for Chris, he seemed to, uh, from what I knew and what we discussed, he seemed to just not have an interest in it for any other reason than his own, his own pleasure or his own desire to create or his own impact and connection with people and with the music. But, it, but in, in other words, he, he had no, he had no interest in like having a hit song on the radio or writing a song with this person or for this some big artist or with some big writer or anything like that. He didn't care at all about any of that stuff. And yeah. it made me so happy because neither do I. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I do and I don't. But I, I love it. I embrace whatever I get involved in. But in my true core and my true heart of hearts like i wouldn't be an artist i wouldn't be doing this if if i didn't feel exactly the same way as him and i i envied him that ability to feel that way and i kind of just you know what i've taken away is just to live that way anyway you know yeah. um uh, Joni mitchell once said to me ask me do you want to be an artist or do you want to be a star and at the time, I was really young. I was I was in my early twenties, and and I thought, well, why can't I be both? I asked her, why can't I guess I can't I can't I be both? And she's like, no. And I said, well, why not? And she's like, I don't know, you just can't. And yeah. and I thought, well, you aren't you both? You know? Yeah. And then, uh, but but the truth is, you know, it, it's kind of like the you can't have your cake and eat it too. You know, a lot of people don't understand that. They misunderstand. Like, well, I'm, 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 if I have cake, I'm going to eat it. You know, it's like, yeah. This is the point. <laughs> point is, you can't eat your cake and still have it afterwards. So, right. yeah. <laughs> um, but if I was amazed, you'd be surprised how many people miss the miss, miss the point. Miss the that. point. <laughs> um, but. Uh, it basically means what is your intention? Can you, accept, you know, what what road do you want to really pursue, and what 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 do you feel most connected to, and what makes you feel most fulfilled? You know, um, how much are you willing to compromise 
just for the frivolities, you know, the the because there are certain things about about being a star, being a celebrity, things that I don't have experience with personally firsthand, but I do have experience with uh, through people who I'm close with, either yeah. as friends or or, or family members, um, <clears throat> that are really awesome and seems super great and there's no wonder that kind of everybody wants a little bit of that and a little piece of that and yeah. but a lot of that comes from just being an awesome person like like i think most people treat celebrities night in a, nicer than they would treat uh most people and to me that's an easy fix just be nice treat everybody nicer right yeah and and the whole then the whole world feels feels better. You know, it's we get confused with thinking that we need to someone else needs to feel worse for us to feel better. It's the competition thing. Someone else it, it, for me to be a winner, I'm proving that I'm a winner because someone else is a loser. I don't want that. Doesn't make me feel comfortable. That's I like. Well, I, you know, that's not a good way to live your life, and you're not going to be happy. I don't yeah. think living your life like that. So I agree. I agree, and that's why. Back, circling back to what we were saying before, I'm stoked because there were a couple of my friends who were in the running for the thing on the boat, and I thought that they hadn't made it. And when I got what I won, I was like, "Oh no, that means that they aren't going to be on it." But then it turned out that there are three of us that won, <laughs> and, so, and I was like, "Yeah, I was so." <laughs> I was, I, I was as excited to find out that information as I was to find out originally that I had won the thing. There's not the only thing that could make it better was to be able to share it with with uh, with other people. Yeah, you know, of course. I so, would uh, I would prefer if we all. <laughs> yeah. the thing. It might be a longer cruise, but <laughs> right, exactly, it might be a little longer. But you know, yeah. what? everybody in there's got something to say, and if they don't, it'll all come out in the wash. Yeah. <laughs> so what's going on with your band, uh, Backbone? Ah, with Backbone. Um, Backbone is, I, I'm, I'm taking a hiatus from Backbone, but things are still happening uh, with that. But uh, suffice it to say that it's not, not, not a lot of Backbone happening in, in my life at this moment, but I will keep you posted if any of that changes. Yes, yes please do. Well, it, it's an amazing project. I have only amazing things to say about it. I hope it succeeds. I am. I feel honored to have been a part of its conception and creation. So that's uh, you know, yeah. That's it. But I'm so also. How did it come happy. about? How did the creation of Backbone come about? Uh, it's that's it's a long story, but I, I, I I'm super. I'm I'm much more focused right now on this new record that I'm doing. I'm so stoked that I've created that and I'm very yeah. proud of that creation. And I really hope the world gets to hear it. But in terms of my own focus, it's 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 all on kind of reconnecting with with myself as a solo artist. You know, a lot of uh, psychologically and emotionally for me, a lot of my departure from that into other side projects um, was because I had grown really tired of promoting myself and my name and so on and so forth. I wanted to yeah. have something else. And it was great as things, uh, you know, just opportunities opened up as they tend to do when when in need, you know, and and focused correctly. Uh, that that's when the Cornell thing kind of came up as well, and that's when everything started to roll with with Backbone. But it helped. That experience has really helped me to value the uh, my career as a solo artist as well, you know, and really like I feel so great about making this record that like you know is just so different i mean they're so such so, so different from each other um especially yeah it's, yeah, it's different this one, well this record if you hear when you hear this new record you'll hear you know it's super organic and and uh and you know but i i love it and i'm really really thrilled with it so is this is the song i don't even know you yet is that on your new album? Yeah, it is on the new album. Yes, we recorded okay. it with everybody. One, two, three, go. Uh, Sound of Impatience. Um, new song, Crazy in Love. Uh, yeah. uh, my father song. There's uh, and there's a there's a song called Crane City. Because it was inspired by all the all the development that's going on in, in all of these cities all around the world uh but you know probably none more 
blatant than Nashville. And so, uh, yeah, I was gonna say if you, uh, you were in Nashville this fall, you probably saw a lot of stuff oh, going on. A lot on. of cranes. So yes, that, a lot. <laughs> And but it's it's that way the world over increasingly so so it's yeah. uh, it's very interesting the song called, uh, on the record that that I wrote in Nashville with Marshall um, uh, Jordan Lawhead and Jason Reeves and I don't know if you know those guys but Jordan Lawhead's the one who he uh, 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 Delilah Tony Lou yeah right? yeah. And and so many amazing, awesome rock and tunes. I don't know if you've gotten into Christian Lopez yet, but he's a really, really great up and coming uh, artist who I got to do some some playing with, some shows with uh, on a, on a Navy aircraft carrier. We were out there for a week, and um, uh, and Marshall actually just produced his record. Marshall Allman has produced some of everybody's favorite records and some of everybody's favorite artists and written some of everybody's favorite songs and it makes me so happy because I've known him for 15 years and I can safely say we've both always wanted to work together and do something like this and yeah. it just couldn't have been more perfect it all came together so beautifully time opened up and I was able to be in Nashville for the whole month of September and yeah. You know, had plenty of time leading up to to get in the swing and get creative and talk about the record and find the direction and then to to create it, lay it out, and then have some time to 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 kind of you know say goodbye. Yeah, and it was super cool. Yeah, well, I can't wait to hear it. That's going to be awesome. I, I, I found the song I don't even know you yet on yeah. YouTube, and I thought, okay, this this has got to be some of his new stuff. I have to say it's probably one of your strongest songs you. to date. Thank you so much. I really loved it. Thanks. I really I really feel strongly about it too. I wrote that with an amazing person named Nikki Thrailkill, part yeah. of, uh, of Ink and Ash, Gareth Asher and Nikki Thrailkill. They have a project together. Also the Earthlings and all those guys, they have a million awesome musical projects together but Nikki and I wrote that song together I'm so happy to say and so proud of it it was just on a used on a lifetime original movie yeah which one was that I, I think it's uh, correct me if I'm wrong but it might be called you killed my mother yeah did you have another song on that uh, movie too yet was it on yeah I think it was on it was on you killed my mother yeah <laughs> I'll have to check that one out next time I have nothing else to watch, I guess. It's a very, it's a very accusatory title. There's not a lot of titles that yeah. are direct. <laughs> they want well, to not want to beat around the bush. They want to cut through the chase. No confusion about what you're about to watch, people. Yeah. <laughs> and then that song is like one of my most romantic and beautiful, slow. But, I mean, it's romantic, but yeah. it also, like... Like everything I write, even even the stuff that's blatantly romantic, um, it, it's not without the full knowledge of what it represents within all different types of relationship dynamics, especially within people's relationships themselves. You know, so a lot of these things are questions I'm asking myself, or or things that I'm asking myself. Of course, there are things that I'm saying to other people, and in some cases, specific other people, and sometimes imaginary you know <laughs> well i think that you're gonna you sound like you're ready to sing a little something for us yeah so. i'm kind of tooling on this guitar but what should what should i sing what uh i gotta think of what kicks it doesn't matter just just whatever you feel right, compelled to do, sing let's do crane city because it's well you know no let's not do crane city what should i do one two three go let's do one two three go because i didn't <clears throat> okay, yeah. tell me. Sound okay? Yeah, sound is great. When I walk these streets, I feel a certain passion. When you're there with me, we start a chain reaction and fall again. Fall again. I'm off my feet. 
feet, I'm swept away, I'm stranded. Got my heart tethered, the disbelief abandon the hard way. I'll make that hard way. You built a castle out of sticks and bones. Here we go, when I get back home and back to life. What do we go after the months of sacrifice? Where did they go? Take time to stop and feel alive. What do we know? I know a feeling when it's right. What do we know? Out here alone, remember independence. We're gonna bring it all back home and feel that confidence. I love that confidence. Thinking in circles keeps my mind well rounded. Searching for subjects just to stay confounded. Trying things, I'm always trying things. You built a castle out of sticks and bones. Here we go, I get back home and back alive. What do we go after the months of sacrifice? Where did they go? Take time to stop and feel alive. What do we know? I know a feeling when it's right. Yeah. What do we know? What do we know? What do we know? Just start again. Yeah, we finally, yeah, yeah, just start. Here we go. When I get back home, it's back to life. One, two, three, go after the month of sacrifice. Where did they go? Take time to stop and feel alive. What do we know? I know I feel it when it's right. What do we know? Right? Hey, yeah. well, I recorded that, in Nashville. That I wasn't Nashville trying to wait for that. I'm not going to go to Nashville and have no yeah. country in the record. I love it, though. It's so cool. And yeah. I, I think that your, your songwriting just keeps getting better and better. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's, uh, that's from my school of, uh, of gibberish on subconscious songwriting. That we, I think we've <laughs> talked about that. Have yeah. we talked about my gibberish? Yeah. I've probably done some gibberish, I think, on this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm putting on this capo because I want to play Crane City. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. <clears throat> um, and I'm playing with the capo now. Everybody's living in Crane City. Moving into brand new bedrooms in the sky. Everywhere I look, a broken mirror staring back, reflecting towers built from pills and things that die. And it breaks my heart. Don't break your heart. They keep buying up the skyway, casting shadows on the floodgates. They keep moving way too fast And we just run out of gas Out on the highway Going my way They keep tearing up the landscape They keep putting up their new gates They keep all the greenest grass Can't out on this overpass Out on the highway Going my way Where you could stand 
beside the redwood tree. It used to be she was the tallest thing in the room. All this greed is just unraveling. Ain't nothing free, and we got nowhere left to go. And it breaks my heart. Don't break your heart. Let it break your heart. Oh, it is flying up the skyway, casting shadows on the floodgates. show you're gonna have a cowboy hat and everything so oh, yeah, right, exactly. I just become progressively more country every time I right. see it. yeah if you spend enough time talking to me then eventually the accent will it's contagious <laughs> it rubs off y'all rubs off that's the first <laughs> thing to 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 go to get because yeah. it's the most convenient way to say, to you, say all. you all it's just the best <laughs> yeah. way to do it there's just no other there's no better way you can say yins that's how they say it in in Pittsburgh and in other places. How are Ian's doing? How are Ian's, yeah. He's doing and use, even use. But y'all is just the best. Well, I, I, everybody who ever goes anywhere in the South starts saying y'all immediately. Even it, yeah. it, like, and it's been God where they move there. Live in this, like, move to Atlanta, you're there for one day and you say y'all for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, anyway, anyway your no. fifth annual uh, Eve of the Eve show is going to be on stageit.com. Fifth annual August. Eve of the Eve, stageit.com, right here. It's basically this. Yeah, basically this. <laughs> except it's just except, me. Except without just me. me talking, talking to you. <laughs> yeah. Half of this. Um, more music, a lot of a lot of music, a lot of songs. I'll just be singing and singing. I even I brought my uh, I brought a little piano in too. I maybe I'll play something on the piano. Oh, nice. I don't know yet. I'm not sure, but we'll. Yeah. I'll see how it goes. But yeah, December 23rd, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, yeah, I can't wait because I haven't done a stage at show, I think, since the last year of the year. Yeah. Yeah, so it was way overdue. Way, we'll way overdue. The interview was way overdue. I know. We'll no come up with some good prizes. I'm sorry, okay. what? I said, no more waiting two years at a time. No, no, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> No, that's, that's <clears throat> fun. I totally understand. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, the last time I checked, there was about 30 tickets left for the oh, sweet. Okay. show. Okay, good. Yeah. I'll have to make sure. I, I, it's, it's, uh, I mean, I, love, I would love the fanfare of being like, it'll be sold out, but there's no, I can have an infinite number of tickets if I, if I want, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's a, I, well, unless I mess with the bandwidth at a certain point, but I don't think, yeah. <laughs> I don't think another uh, couple hundred or even a couple of tens of thousands of people would, would really slow that down too much. So every one of you tell a thousand friends and it'll be perfect. 
Yeah. Well, I know that you can add tickets to the show, but I didn't know if there was like a limit to how many. Oh, tickets. yes. No, no. You can add, you, I can add some tickets to the show, but right. get them quick because they might sell out, which is imaginary. And then I'll add more. Yeah. And it's pay what you can as always. That's right. I always like to, to be pay what you can. It's so funny because it's a suggested donation and it's a cre it's credits. So it's like a hundred credits is 10 bucks, you know, right, yeah. but it looks like, uh -huh, it doesn't say a hundred bucks, but it says a hundred in the relative, you know, yeah, it's, saying what the price is. And so uh, naturally people are already confused thinking that I'm saying that the recommended <laughs> ticket price is a hundred dollars a pop. hundred dollars to watch you online. <laughs> No, no, no. You can pay like 10 cents, I think, down to 50 cents or something if you want. Pay what you can. Pay what you want. People give each other rides on there and stuff. Yeah. You know? Well, it's well worth it. I've I've watched a few of these shows on stage. It. Uh, yeah. I've watched yours, and there's been a couple. Um, I think Vertical Horizon had one a few years ago. I watched theirs. It's always so much fun that. to watch these stage it shows. So I hope that everyone will remember to do that this year. Um, and then the fifth anniversary of Sell Across the Sun is, is in 2018. That's right. 7th through the 10th. Yeah. And uh, I have the website for ticket information under this interview, yeah. actually under this video. Uh -huh. uh, and the 10th anniversary of Down the Hatch will be May 30th. Yes, it will. The 10th yeah. anniversary Down the Hatch. Oh yeah. That's going to be. You're, you're involved in a lot of like different like Festivals. Uh, milestone moments. I know. There's a, yeah, I've been around long enough for everything to, to have anniversaries <laughs> now. You know, it's like. Yeah. And then you're doing the Off the Record Music Festival in June yes, in Atlantic City. Yes, I am. I so, can't wait. That's really cool. Yeah, that all well, I have super cool. all that information underneath the video, links and stuff. Perfect. So people can check it out and get tickets. Um, anything you want to add before we go? No. I don't think so. Um, I'm, it looks like I'm doing some stuff with, with Pat McGee, more stuff with Pat McGee in January. Uh, I think we're doing a show at St. Rock. I may or may not be opening, but likely I'm going to be opening on January 25th. That's in Hermosa Beach. So there you go. Yeah, Pat will very cool. That I remembered to mention that. Yeah, okay. That's, cool. it. That's it. That's it? Yeah, I think so. Well, right, Keaton, thank you so much for coming on. It's it's always an honor and a privilege having you on here, and it was great to see you again. Thank you. Always great to see you, too. Mwah. Yeah. Mwah. Um, yeah, so when you get ready to yeah. um, release your album, yes. let me know. We'll have you back on. Wonderful. And you can talk about the release and everything. Yeah, um, thank you so much for playing those songs, by the way. My pleasure. Nice job. Absolutely, yeah. my pleasure. And happy yeah, holidays. And Merry Christmas and yeah. happy holidays. Yeah, everybody. you too. Yeah, you too. Um, yeah, so and next time that you were in Nashville playing at the Bluebird or some other venue, you better let me know. Of course, of course, absolutely. I want, well, hopefully, I'll be spending a lot of time yeah. out there because. Um, I mean, making that record was so extraordinary and, and just I have so many wonderful friends out there. And so we'd be out there playing and doing stuff, all, all kinds of stuff. Right, yeah. Get you a cowboy hat. <laughs> That's what I need. I need the right one. Yeah, you need the right one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'm sure there are plenty of places in Nashville where you can find just the right cowboy hat. Oh, well, yes, there are. Yeah. Okay, well, Keaton Summons, thank right. you so much. Thank you. Good luck with the stage at show. Of course. Bye. Thank you. I'll see you there. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye.